Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Toyota Corolla Altis. I don't know if I should call it the Altis or not, but this car comes courtesy of Aditya to me. So thank you very much for this vehicle. Although OG fans will remember that I had done a vlog of this car, but magically disappeared into the metaverse. You can see the key is kind of Lexus inspired, and this is actually there to open the boot of the vehicle. This is to unlock the car. This is to lock the car. Yeah. Anyway, straight away we're going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle, which means struggle, struggle, not really. And there, it's a very dirty engine. Aditya has never ever put a cloth on that engine or even cleaned it. But it says dual VVT air right there. There is insulation here as well. Let's just shut this. Okay, with this Corolla, Toyota stopped doing boring for the Corolla because you can see the design is very nice and attractive. You get this chrome and you know, the chrome actually joins the light. Beautiful looking. There's a projector setup, but it's not LED as such. Like you can see there's halogen there. You get a DRL, that is a fog light which again is halogen and then overall design language is actually quite nice for a Toyota. This was a revolution when it was launched I think 2013-14 or something of that sort. Okay, there is the indicator which you can see. The sun is a little bright today, I don't know why, because obviously that's what the sun does, that's its job to be bright. Anyways, from the side, uh, it's not very adventurous from the side as much as it is from the front. And the tire size is also very conservative, 205, 55, 16s, we need 17 inches probably. And here it says dual VVTi. Indicator here on the outside rear view mirror, slight chrome treatment, request sensor and rain visors have been put, it says Toyota there, I actually touched it so it's making this sound saying that Bhai tere paas to chabi tu kyon kar raha aise, okay. Anyways from the rear, this is the VL grade of the car which I think is the top spec and first it comes fingers of truth, we'll be scared of this real exhaust which is actually below, alright, it's hidden underneath the bumper, you get rear parking sensors, tail lights look actually nice and has this chrome in it, reverse parking camera is right there. And let's do one thing, let's open the boot of this vehicle, which means I have to press a button here. There opens the boot. Well, it's full of kachara at the moment. Spare wheel will obviously not be an alloy because that's what Toyota does. It says Corolla here on the mats. And oh my God, spare wheel is full size and is an alloy. I'm sorry, Toyota, for not trusting you. Please don't break up with me. I'm really sorry. Anyways, jokes aside, let's open the rear door because this is where this car excels. Okay. That is Aditya's driving position. This is my sitting position. So you can see legroom is actually quite generous at the rear. And you know what's another USB? Yes, the seats actually recline. So that is upright, this is recline. All I have to do is pull this lever and there it reclines. Now I can, okay. Okay, he has put this stuff here, which I need to open, but then 60-40 split is also there. So seat gets this recline function, which is actually quite nice, enabling a lot more comfort. Isofix child seat mounts. Rear center armrest has twin cup holders as well. Everybody gets a head, thankfully, and the floor is almost flat. Now, when I sit inside, I realize that under thigh support is not the best. Legroom and knee room is actually good enough, not really scooped out, but there's a magazine holder. Headroom is nice because of the recline angle, of course, and there's a hook handle. Seat belts get the height adjust function as well, and the dashboard is a mixed bag. It's actually uh, very different from what we usually see from Toyota, but kind of plain and basic in that regard. Now, you get two USB charging sockets, there's some storage space. Here as well, so practical cabin and then the door pockets are also big enough, but plenty of hard plastics. They've used beige in plenty, like here, the seats are beige and beige here and there, resulting in an airy cabin as such. But let's get to the front because there's some interesting bits inside this car. First and foremost, it gets seven airbags. Yes, that's right. It gets seven airbags. It gets side curtain airbags, which you can see right here. It says side curtain. Okay. SRS because it's supplementary restraint system. Anyways. Here, driver seat gets electric adjust, power adjust. Door pockets are big enough at the front. Driver window actually gets one touch up and down. Unlock the car, lock the car. And this is for the child lock function. Yeah. Controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment is here. And then you can shut the mirror if you so wish. Audio system is decent, but they don't have speakers on the rear door. Yeah. None on the rear door. Instead, they have put it here on the parcel shelf, uh, which I can't see right now because it's a sun blind, which actually came with the car. So seats are actually decently nice and comfortable as well. I need to just recline it a bit because Aditya sits on the dashboard. <laughs> There's a proper dead pedal there. This is for the parking sensor. This is the engine start button and two dummy buttons, maybe one for NOS. Okay, this is for the cruise control. And I like the way the AC vents have been done. Okay, it wasn't shut with the proper third as such. Okay, let's just shut this indicator for the moment. Now, hard plastics are there lower down, but uh, this is also a little hard, but this is actually a little soft. So they have played along with all this. This does not move. 
below here there is storage space two compartments as such twin cup holders you can remove them if you so wish there's actually a sport mode when you actually press this button now it says sport in the instrument cluster as well now this is a cvt so you can see the cvt gear lever and there's some chrome treatment here there's some storage space here there's a 12 volt charging socket this is for the ionizer it's known as nano e normal handbrake of course this is a turn off traction control now the trick is if you press it once now TRC turns off and if you keep that button pressed for around maybe 4-5 seconds then VSC also turns off there you can see yeah VSC stands for vehicle stability control that also turns off and your steering wheel is adjustable but yeah both for reach as well as rake at this price you would expect that these are the controls for the audio system phone call and all that these are the controls to browse through that multi-information display which is decent enough because it shows you a lot of information but the same thing which you have seen in a lot of Toyota and Lexus cars as such so you can browse through you and you know change stuff if you so wish but yeah, that's about it. Not like it's not very adventurous. This car is not about being adventurous, but more about reliability. There's an eco indicator. Now this is the speedometer. There's a fuel meter. That is a tachometer. There's a temperature meter. Tell lights have been splashed everywhere they could find. Automatic headlights, of course. It also gets automatic wipers. Let's use the wipers right away. Actually, the spray is quite nice. It works actually very nicely as well. It says SRS curtain airbag. Okay, there's a knee airbag here somewhere. Yeah, there it says SRS airbag. So that's how it actually gets seven airbags. Meanwhile, it does not get one touch cancel indicators. Okay, that's kind of weird and disappointing as well. There's a clock in the center. This is a seven inch screen, which is honestly very chintu mintu as such. The good thing is that it's relatively easy to browse. Let's get into reverse. So this is the reverse parking camera. Now, okay, this is one of the modes and you can change if you want to see left, you want to see left plus right, you want to see, okay, right, I want to see right. These modes are also there and make this sound for the parking sensors. And as soon as you get into reverse now, the left rear view mirror actually goes down so there's some attention to detail this is i think for the seat belt warning this is for the hazard light of course this is the controls for the air conditioning it obviously gets a climate control air conditioning system which works really nice the air conditioning is an absolute chiller and uh, i said chiller not chiller okay <laughs> you guys are not listening properly to what i'm saying it's giving you an eco score so i feel like i'm in school but it's not very fun to use and then there is a usb socket here along with i think a micro usb as well so that's again something which is kind of useful okay I, oh you know what you can just put this okay you can tilt it this is if you want to put a cd because it has a cd player and then i just want to get back outside of this do something go back what are you doing i okay oh my god such a struggle i press the home button i wanted to okay go back into position so that's happened anyways vehicle information all that i've shown, shown you obviously there are maps as well so navigation which honestly does not work that brilliantly well in this car but we just want to try to see how it is. Yeah, it's kind of weird and low quality. Let's get out of this. Let's play an audio right away, which means I need to get into radio and physical buttons would be really a nice touch. Audio quality is actually decent for a stock system. I would say it's kind of impressive. Dashboard is huge. Well, that's what she said. My wire is stuck in the handbrake somehow. So as I see it, the Gorilla was a very practical car. In fact, here you get a mirror, but the light has to be separately operated. That's kind of weird. There's a sunglass holder here and there's no LED for any of the lights. I don't understand. You need two people to handle this. One will do the light, one will open the visor. That's kind of weird. Auto naming inside rear view mirror. But yeah, it's about the reliable petrol engine of this car, which is a screamer as long as you don't have this gearbox, which unfortunately is the case here. So let's do one thing. Let's start driving right away. All right, we're all set to go, which means first and foremost, we turn off the air conditioning, we get into drive mode, handbrake down, and we're going to turn off traction control. First, we get into sport mode and then traction control. We keep this button pressed so that vehicle stability control also turns off. That is off as well. And let me just get behind so it doesn't show me that. It shows me the eco indicator because I have to obviously please get our Thunberg, right? So here we get into manual mode, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard light off and off we go. Yeah, this car will not wheel spin. Why will it wheel spin? It's kind of, uh, you know, the CVT which messes up things. And then the engine is actually a gem here. It's very smooth, it's very refined, but then gets very, very, very vocal once you get past 4,000 RPM because of course the rubber band effect is in plenty. This is a seven step CVT gearbox and a CVT, well, you know now how it is, but somehow the mid-range response is absolutely fantastic. You can see the lunge which it has in the mid-range which is actually very pleasing. Obviously a manual is much 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 better and enthusiastic 
in the Corolla and very much uh, engaging but the CVT gets a job done of giving you the convenience of an automatic but you know what Toyota has really gone for a soft suspension for a fantastic ride quality in fact the suspension travel is also quite a bit the result is the low speed ride is absolutely fantastic but this car does not ride flat and that is a problem because it has this vertical movement because of the soft suspension and higher speeds so in the city it's absolutely stunning but out on the highway can get a bit of roly poly and uh, here you can see the engine likes to be near the red line in fact the red line is around 6600 rpm now because i'm in manual mode here i'm just going to downshift here we are into first gear and okay now let's do one thing let's actually get into the regular drive mode and i want to see by using the paddles that we can get into higher gear i have to be in manual mode to probably use it but it's not really going ahead probably i think it's yeah yeah now 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 we are in fourth now we are in okay sixth now come on we need to get into seven so around 80 kilometers per hour will we manage mm, yeah so you get paddle shifters but they're kind of useless because the car does what it feels like on its own as such so here we're going to take a u-turn right away and let me downshift here when you downshift to first it responds but then you know it kind of holds the revs around say 6000 rpm or whereabouts and then zoom, 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 the rubber band effect kicks in and plenty steering wheel is decent it's not very light at low speeds but it's i would say it's decent not even heavy as such now when traction control is off it continuously keeps telling me again and again trc off even though i go back into the indicator fuel efficiency should be around 12 kilometers per liter out on the highway you can stretch it to maybe almost 18 19 kilometers per liter again everything depends on your driving style because you know when you rev the nuts out of this engine obviously it drinks more and then talking about the engine it's a 1.8 liter vvti okay you know it's variable valve timing electronic lift control something of that sort equivalent to what is honda's vtec motor this one produces 138 horsepower and the torque output is 173 newton meters something of that sort i honestly keep forgetting now this car will go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 12 seconds and it weighs 225 kgs or something of that sort resulting in something which is very light easy nimble to drive in fact handling is also quite good only thing is that body roll is there in plenty because obviously softer suspension and that you can feel but still this maintains its line when you even try to corner it hard screeches the tires a bit understeer will obviously kick in plenty all these things are there natural factor in this car i only wish that it was a little bit more sportier in the way it uh, it performs especially the cvt box kind of ruins the whole experience of driving and you know <laughs> usually it doesn't really move as such when the rubber band effect kicks in here come on yeah it's happy to make a downshift and then put you into the meat of the band of performance and you can see it doesn't feel sluggish in any regard it gets the job done it's fast enough and we're going to come to a halt here on the corner or oh, no actually not because we should do it ahead i realize that there's too much traffic and not the right place to stop need to keep pressing this trc button i need to hire a person who keeps sitting and pressing this button that okay you know what trc is off i know that i've done it myself i can see this freaking traction control car skidding icon right there you don't have to keep showing me trc of trc of trc of this toyota and i can get a little irritating she's that girlfriend of yours who keeps messaging you in spite of you telling you know what i'm busy right now do not intervene and you put like dnd out and dnd is not that road which is there in ncr region i'm talking about do not disturb sound is sporty enough yeah it does sound sporty but you have to really keep it higher up and when you do that now the fuel efficiency drops to single digit numbers so it all depends like you want to enjoy your toyota car then you cannot really rev the nuts out of it now the thing is the price of this car was around i think between 20 to 25 lakhs depending on the variant which you opted for it was cheaper than the civic because it did not get a sunroof and because it did not get a sunroof toyota could underprice it but you know what toyota's reliability and that whole image is so good that's the reason aditya decided to buy a corolla and not a civic right is that right yeah and we are in toyota land right now because i can see a camry right ahead anyways this car is that's one of the to, yeah there's a fortune here this car is one of the most selling cars in the world yeah the corolla and the camry sell like crazy because obviously there are a lot of taxi drivers who use it ouch <laughs> <laughs> no but because of the reliability easy maintenance and all those things the corolla is just so famous and you know what Toyota actually discontinued the car because the segment is dying and then I can see a Yaris there so oh my god there's so many Toyotas like people in Delhi really love Toyota cars anyways the thing is that uh, Toyota discontinued the Corolla because they thought the D segment is very small and then the new model also came and then they will take the effort just, just take a Siaz and put a sticker on it and then sell it so that's kind of the irony mandatory horn check 
mandatory wiper check all that has already been done and we're going to take a u-turn this guy's so easy to drive it's so effortless it's unbelievable and then you decide okay let's go to the throttle no no wheel spin at all this car does not believe in doing wheel spins you know because obviously the engine will not give you the grunt lower down so that's the reason it doesn't wheel spin it's not like it has a lot of grip on off it doesn't so that's the reason it doesn't wheel spin you would expect it to wheel spin like mad considering these japanese engines really put a lot of power down and then they don't offer any traction this is the left you take ahead yep. all right here we go Okay, we are going to corner aggressively. No, we are not. So stuff is falling down. Ouch! Yeah, suspension will be slightly harder so that it doesn't really move that much. But then softness makes it a very plush ride in that regard. So, guys, this is my vlog of the Toyota Corolla. If you like it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's a like button, and also subscribe to the channel. There's a Lexus. There's a Corolla. There's an Innova. Another Innova. So, like so many people. Okay, there's another Innova. Maybe we should play this game. Spot the Toyotas, and then okay. then we'll realize that we are in Toyota land. Because check this out. Okay. So we are Innova, Fortuner, Innova, and it's not like just Innova as I seen. There's a Camry here as well. Crazy. Yeah, there's another Corolla right there. <laughs> Bye.